Hello to you and thank you for joining Content on Our TV, the TV show that hosts authors from around the world in order to reveal some secrets of behind the scenes of their publishing journey. And we are very delighted to host here with us Mr. Avigdo Kalani. Hello to you, sir. Hi. If you would share the most profound moment in your life, what moment would it be? Well, it can be a few, but uh, first is the, the day that I, uh, in 67, I crossed the border in uh, the war, 67 war in Israel. I was the first tank uh, crossing the border and I lost a few tanks. And after that, in the end of the day, I found myself in the hospital, uh, badly wounded, and I spent a year in the hospital. Dying alive there. Dying alive, 60% of my body was burned. I got the 17 operation, and this is the, the moment that I uh, never forgot. Another moment, of course, it's uh, the war in the 73 war uh, that I had to lead my unit uh, to um, almost we lost all uh, the Golan Heights. Uh, most of the Golan Heights invaded by uh, the Syrian, and uh, for four days we fought against them, and the last moment my unit has successfully stopped them, and this is the moment that uh, I have never forgot. Let's see one moment that you shared in a very, very unique film that was done about those uh, huge seconds in the 73 war. Let's see it together. <sighs> שהייתה בגובה שישה מטר, פתאום אני רואה מרחק עשרים וחמישה מטר ממני שלושה טנקים T-62 עומדים! צעקתי לנהג שלי, נהג עצור! יובל נותן בעלם כזה שהוא מעיף את כולנו קדימה, ואני מסתכל, בחזית שלי עשרים וחמישה מטר כבר על העברות העמדות שלנו, שלוש מאות ארבע מאות מטר על עברות העמדות שלנו קדימה עשרים וחמישה מטר, שלושה טנקים T-62 ואני צריך להחליט מה אני עושה. אני רואה שלושה מפקדים סורים מסתכלים לי תוך העיניים. אני לוקח את הצריח מהר, ושם את הידית הזו, וצודד מהר שמאלה, שם את הטנק על ה... את התותח על הטנק הראשון, והוא אומר, תראה עליו, צועק על התותחן שלי. הוא לא מבין על מה אני מדבר, אין פקודה כזאת, תראה עליו. פעם ראשונה הבנתי למה שמו את התותחן קרוב לרגליים של המפקד. קיבל מני בעיטה ונתן לחיצה על ההדק ואף פגע. מהר לקחתי את הידית חזרה והזזתי מהר אל הטנק המרכזי והתותחן שלי כונן, הטנק השאר הכניס פגז חדש לבית הבלייה והתותחן לחץ על ההדק והשמיד אותו גם כן. ומהר לקחתי והעברתי את ה... אל הטנק השמאלי ואני רואה לו לא השחור מסתכל לתוך העיניים. I'm going to go to the tank. 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 שירינו נשאר תקוע. אני רואה את הטנק השאר גידי, את הקמב"ץ, גם כן גידי. שניהם עם הציפורניים מנסים למשוך את התרמיל. התותחן בהיסטריה צועק, אין ירי, אין ירי. והלוע השחור, 115 מילימטר, ישר לתוך הפרצוף. בשנייה האחרונה הם מושכים את התרמיל הריק, מכניסים פגז חדש, וכמו שהסדן נסגר, אף פעם. ואז החוצה, ככה אני נרגע, מנסה להקל, הרגליים שלי רועדות. אני רואה טנק רביעי מסתער עליי, ואומר אני לוקח את הידית הזו, צודד אותו מהר ימינה, מכוון על הטנק הרביעי, והוא לוחץ על ההדק ומשמיד גם אותו. תוך שניות, ראינו כולנו את המוות. קיליון היה זריז יותר, וגידי היה זריז יותר, וככה נשארנו בחיים. 
Wow. You know, we could practically with you, to be with you in the tank in the, those uh, horrible moments. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a moment I never forgot. It's a, a situation that I didn't know that already uh, the invasion of the most of the Golan Heights and I, uh, we, uh, most of the forces, we, we drove to the second line and I moved from the second line to try to attack them, to have a counterattack. And suddenly I found myself in the four tank in the front of me. I was in shock and you know, at 25 meters, it's like a knife uh, combat. And it never happened. Usually we shoot for two kilometers, three kilometers, no, it's far away. And I found myself in this situation. And after that, I had to lead my unit, it was a small unit with uh, around 10 tanks, to invade to the area they had already, uh, they were there, and uh, to stop them. They came uh, with 160 tanks, and we, uh, we were around uh, like 12 tanks, no more than that. And this is a, a, a main problem, was the, it, it's a leadership problem how to lead your people and they're scared to move and to convince them this is important, convince them this is a, there is a chance that we will win. And while you were writing these uh, memories in this wonderful book about the, the international version, first of all, in, in Hebrew and afterwards uh, in English around the world, the highlights of courage, how did you move your people? How can a leader... Uh, in a first, struggling time, yeah. move his, his men. First, you, ha um, they have uh, to see where you are. And if you in the front and they see your back, this is, uh, you are an example for them. Another thing, you have to find a way how to convince them. It means to move them to your frequency on the radio that everybody can listen to you. Mm -hmm. And you can convince the driver, the gunner, all over the tanks, and they can listen to you and can see where you are. And, um, and uh, they know you. They know your ability. You fight uh, with them already uh, uh, for four days. And um, the moment that I move, I told them, if you want to join me, join. And I called them, if am I see chicken in my unit? This moment is a critical moment because I ask question, am I see chicken in my unit? And everybody doesn't want to feel like a chicken and to show to his friend that he's a chicken. And he ordered to the driver to move forward. And this is the moment that I pray to the God behind the hills, it was 160 tank, it was the only person in the world that I knew that's 160 tank coming. And uh, we were been in the, this side of the hill, and to convince them to go in the top of the, to be at the top of the hill, and to try to stop them from there before they will arrive. This is a, it was a critical moment. It is, uh, and after you and, and, and your soldiers practically saved the Golan Heights in that uh, '73 war, and also the northern part of Israel, getting uh, the top award that uh, the Israel IDF in the country, the government can give to a soldier that you got it afterwards. And after you started writing the memories, the books, and uh, you became minister in the government of Israel, and you're giving lectures right now around the world. One tool that people that are being, hearing your lectures around the world that you could share with them from your experience? Uh, I can tell you that um, this book, I didn't know that I, done, I know to write, but this is the best bestseller in our country mm -hmm. and uh, sold all over the world. Uh, but I tried to describe what happened there mm -hmm. and to show the world that uh, the secret weapon in our country is the soldiers and how you can move soldiers to protect the country and this is, the, this is what's unique in our country. The soldiers is the secret weapon. And how you, can, you fight with them, <coughs> convince them to hold the flag of the country, even your enemy come to destroy your country. And this comes from our education. And I had the feeling that I want to share with somebody in our country first, and after that maybe in the world, to share the feeling from the combat and maybe to salute those soldiers, they, uh, they, 
um, they are not with us until today. And the, the last of all the books that you've been publishing, as you've said, great bestsellers in Israel, hundreds and thousands of people are reading, are being part of your community in Israel and also worldwide. Also, there is a new book that we'll talk about it in our coming uh, meetings about leadership. Is it the same kind of leadership today that is using the tools that you used in 1973, in 1967, or today a leader should have something else that you are revealing in this book? I tell you, uh, in this book I try to, um, uh, to find the way, what is the formula of leadership? Mm -hmm. And I start with uh, Moses, uh -huh. Rabbi Moses, from, uh, that he uh, moved us from uh, Egypt to Israel 40 years. Uh, this, kind, this kind of leadership, and King David, mm -hmm. and after that uh, Ben-Gurion, and after that people from the industry, people from the army, people how to lead the teacher in the school or rabbi in the, his community. I, I'm trying to develop some kind of formula that go from Moses all the way until today, how you stand in the front of people, how to talk with people, how to be professional, to understand what is the formula to lead people. And I give in this book uh, all, uh, all my experience that I, I ask questions, but all my experience I put here and I have, uh, of course, a lot of experience. And um, this is uh, maybe if somebody will read this book, mm -hmm. he is going to be a politician. If he's going to be a um, commander in the army, he's going to be uh, uh, a in the industry or even a uh, um, uh, sport guide. Mm -hmm. He can find in this book some kind of uh, um, advice uh, uh, with, with how to find the way to, to lead people and to, to bring them to success. Exactly. And this is uh, the sixth book of mine, and I'm very proud about this book. Yes, Leadership in the Circles of Life. Yeah. People that want to learn from a leader how they could lead their life. Yeah. Yes. So, Vigo Kalani, I want to thank you very much. You're welcome. And the people that want to be part of your community, that want to uh, get to know more about your books, get to know more about the lecture, just to contact so the social networks or directly in order to be part of your leadership journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Avidul Kahalani. And thank you for joining and seeing. And if you have and you want to be part of this journey, just click, just engage, just share, and just contact. I think that communication at the end of the day is something that was relevant in 1973 in the tank, but is relevant also with you here today. Of course. Yes. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining also this episode of Contento Now TV.